Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone in Facebook. Welcome to St. James Sunday School, where the Reverend Don Tavius Sanders is the pastor. We will start our Sunday school with a song. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's the precious fountain. Bring to church school creed. I believe my ALB church school must grow and grow. And I must make it a top priority to make, make it, it so. Every member a Christian, every Christian a worker, every worker trained, trained so that a worker need not, not be ashamed. ashamed. This we, we ask, ask in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. Now we'll have a prayer by Reverend Davis Barney, who will be our teacher for the hour. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning. Yes. We thank you for being everything that you are. Yes, Lord. You are our Alpha and our Omega. Yes. Our beginning and our end. Yes. yes. Lord, we thank you for thank waking you, us up this morning. Uh -huh. thank we you, thank you, Lord, for giving us the strength in our yes. limbs thank yes. you, Lord. to serve you one more time. Thank you, Lord. This morning, Lord, we ask for strength to make it through the day. Yes. Strength to receive a word from heaven above yes. Yes. that we might be encouraged throughout this week. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. Bless our church school. Bless, bless the lessons Please, this Lord. morning. Bless. bless each and every person that is tuned in Yes. to see what you have to say. Yes. So, Lord, we thank you. Thank you. We thank you, ask that you just bless the leadership, bless our bishop, bless our presiding elder and both of their spouses, bless our pastors. Yes. And, Lord, Please. we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for St. James this thank morning. You, thank you, Lord. So, Lord, we ask that you just have your way. Please. Have Do what Lord. you see fit. Yes. That you might get the glory. Yes. Lord. And we ask all these things in your name. Yes. And let us all say Amen. 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 And Father, please teach us like you taught your disciples how to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name thy kingdom, kingdom come. Thy will, will be done, done in earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our, our daily bread. bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses. trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. temptation. But, but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, power, and the glory. In Amen. Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Reverend Barney, for that powerful prayer. Good morning again, everyone on Facebook. We are now in our summer quarter of our Sunday school lessons. 
And the title uh, theme of it is Partners in a New Creation. Uh, we are in Unit 1, and the theme of that is God's Deliver and Restore. Uh, we are in also Lesson 2 of Unit 1, and today's date is June the 12th, and the year is 2022. Our subject for today is God Foretells of Redemption. Our lesson scripture comes out of Isaiah, the 49th chapter, the 1st through the 17th verse. But we'll be focusing on uh, uh, Isaiah, the 49th chapter, the 1st verse through the 13th verse. In unity this morning, we will read, please stand, we will read our key verse this morning, and then we will follow that by reading verses of today's lesson. Key verse in Eunice. Thus saith the Lord, in a time of favor, I have answered you. On the day of salvation, I have helped you. I have kept you and given you as a covenant to the people to establish the land, to appropriate the desolate heritage. That comes out of Isaiah, the 49th chapter, and the 8th verse. Starting from the first, chap uh, first verse of the 49th chapter of Isaiah, it reads, Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you people, from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his heart, hand to hit, hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. Verse 5, and now the Lord says, Who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him, for I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus said the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel is Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nation, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. Thus said the Lord, in a time of favor I have answered you. On a day of salvation I have helped you. I have kept you and given you as a... Nine. Verse 9, saying to the prisoners, come out to those who are in darkness. Show yourselves. They shall feed along the way. On all the bare heights shall, he, uh, shall be their pastures. They shall not hunger or thirst, neither scorching wind nor sun shall strike them down. For he who has pity on them will lead them and by springs of water will guide them. Verse 11, And I will turn all my mountains into a road, and my highway shall be raised up. Lo, these shall come from far away, and lo, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of sea. All sing of joy, O heavens, and exalt, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing, 
for the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his suffering ones. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Lord, Lord have, have mercy upon, upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Hear what Christ our Savior said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is likened to it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Under these two commandments hang all the law and the prophet. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, our teacher of the hour, Reverend Darius Bonney. Reverend Bonney. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We just thank God that God has given us another opportunity to see his greatness. And in this lesson today, we're going to see what God has promised. Uh, the way that I want to start out, I want us to go back a little while. Go back to when we were children. Sometimes when we were children, our parents used to say things to us. And we didn't understand what they meant. Remember when you would get in trouble sometimes and but even if they weren't going to give you a whooping, I got plenty of whoopings, I don't know about y'all. Yeah. But even then they would say, if you only knew what I've sacrificed for you, if you only knew what I've done for you. And when you were a child, you had no understanding. Amen. But oh, when time came, you could understand what they meant. Yeah. Well, guess what? The children of Israel were much like us when we were children. They had a good father and God Almighty, and God provided everything to them. But sometimes they were just up to mischief, and they would get in trouble. Every shiny thing caught their eye. Everything that they thought they wanted was somewhere else, and they went straight. Here in our lesson today, God is uh, reinforcing what he did in our last lesson. In our last lesson, he was talking about, you know what? There's some things that I have against those who come against my children. Yeah. He was listing those charges against Babylon. And he said, you know what? If you don't turn from your wicked ways uh -huh. and worship me, there is a punishment. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes we don't understand that punishments are there for correction. Amen. They're not just there to abuse us or put us to... Uh, pain or suffering yes. they're to correct us and get us back on the right path amen but you know sometimes we don't listen and guess what Israel was no different amen but here in this lesson God was showing up and showing out and he says not only am I a God of punishment but I am a God of redemption yes yeah anybody remember S and H green stamps yes I know for some of our youngers they don't understand what that was but that was a good day yes. when you could go to the redemption center and you could put all your stamps together and you could get something. I remember one time my mama went there with us and she had me already placed the stamps in and they were tight and right and we went in and guess what? We came out with a toaster. Mm -hmm. And I know for some of you that's not a big thing but me as a child uh, a toaster that we didn't have to spend money on. Little did I know she spent money all those times and got those stamps. Yeah. But I, I just felt good when we could redeem those stamps. And we collected those books. Nowadays, things are much more modern. We don't have those things and situations. But you know what? God is still good. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, today in our lesson, we're going to talk about uh, some things and we're going to talk about how God redeems the people. Yeah. But is there anybody here who remembers a time when you felt redeemed? That maybe you weren't at your best and then something restored you to your faith and your hope 
and your trust in God. Anybody got a story about that this morning? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, when when I was uh, diagnosed with prostate cancer, mm -hmm. uh, I I had said that I was not going. I was going to keep it to myself. Mm -hmm. wasn't going to tell nobody and just go about getting the treatment and procedures and all of that. Yes, sir. But the spirit woke me up that night mm. and the spirit said, you're going to have to be God's messenger. Mm -hmm. And before I realized it, I was sharing it with other folks. Mm -hmm. And they, I started receiving phone calls. Now, I've I got restored because I was going to be selfish. Mm -hmm. uh, but God did not want me to be selfish with that mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. He knew that he had so many others who were afraid. Mm. He gave me comfort. Yes, sir. I didn't realize. It. I didn't realize it at the time until after I became the messenger. Mm -hmm. Once I became the messenger, then it, he revealed that to me that you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And I went about his business, yes, not sir. my business. All right. Yes. All right. Amen. Amen. Anybody else got a redemption story? A time when you felt like, well, I was out, but now I'm back in. Mm -hmm. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. I apologize for, for being late. And um, most have heard this story before. In 2015, mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with kidney failure and immediately went on kidney dialysis. Mm -hmm. And it was at that time that I realized I wasn't truly serving God. It's amazing what um, a health crisis will do. Mm -hmm. It will bring you closer. It will make you more serious um, with with your relationship with God. And from that time on, that's when I started coming to Sunday school, started teaching in the Sunday school, um, and started taking that relationship a lot more seriously. Not saying that I didn't, but it just drew me closer. Yes, sir. And it helped me to be redeemed. All right. Amen. When God works in your life, God never promises us that every day would be a rosy or a sunny day. Amen. Sometimes rain will come. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. But we can even take joy in the rain because guess what? Like yesterday, we were out at the park and then we had to go to plan B. Mm -hmm. But do you know how many people weren't able to wake up yesterday? Mm -hmm. How many people weren't able to leave their home yesterday? Um, regardless of whether it was sunny on the outside or not, they, they were limited. There were even some folks who woke up on the wrong side of the grass. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. So we should be thankful in that. Here in this lesson, God is going to talk about redemption, but as we get started, I need some help. I need someone to read verse 3 of the text, verse 3 of our Sunday school text. And he said to me, You are my servant Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Amen. Amen. First of all, God identifies who he is talking to. Mm -hmm. Did you know that every blessing is not for everybody? That's, right. Right. That's why people don't understand favor sometimes. Uh -huh. What's meant for me is for me. Yeah. What's meant for you is for you. Amen. And you can't get mine and I can't get yours. Mm -hmm. But here God wanted to identify who he was talking to, his servant Israel. Yeah. Uh -huh. The word servant implies that someone has a master or someone who supervises them or who is over them. And God wanted to make sure that we understood the structure, that Israel was not the master of things, yeah. that he was. Yeah. Someone skip down and read verse 7 for me. Okay, thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply de despised, and Lord of the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see <laughs> and stand up 
princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. Amen. In verse 3, we're talking about a servant. And then in verse 7, God identified himself as a redeemer. But not only for just Israel. He said he was going to save them so that others may see kings and princes and others somewhere else. And that says to us, when God redeems us and God restores us, that's not always for us. God sometimes shows up in our lives so he can shine into somebody else's life. So as our lesson goes forward, I want you to think about that. Think about how God has kept you and God has healed you and God has moved you. That it wasn't always for you. He chose you, but it wasn't always for you. Sometimes it's for those who are looking at you. From the examples in the stories that were told this morning and the, the testimonies, sometimes we think it's all about us. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. I remember when I started losing my vision in my right eye, that I was like, why now? Why me? But then God had to show me it wasn't for me. It was for others to see that no matter what comes, God is still in control. And that's a good testimony to have. Amen? As we go through this lesson, we need to look at a couple of things. Let's first start looking at Israel. Have you ever known somebody who had it, who was there, who seemed like they had everything together? Did you know perception is not always reality? Just because somebody lives in a nice house doesn't mean they have a home. Just because somebody is driving a nice car doesn't mean that it's all together there. Brother Monroe can testify to that. Amen. Some people came in with some nice looking cars, but when they looked under the hood. Yes, sir. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Amen. Amen. So we have to make sure we don't always look at things from the outside mm. and make judgments because of what's on the outside. Mm, yeah. there, there are some things and situations that we just do not know. Yeah. Israel had it all. Yes. They had a God who loved them a God who provided for them, a God who cared for them. But guess what? They went astray anyway. Yeah. I was talking with a fellow teacher the other day. They were going through some stress, and they said, well, brother, sometimes I just get weak, and I want things my way. And I said, you're only human. Did you know that we want things our way? Yeah. This morning, my wife and I went to Burger King for breakfast, and guess what? Their motto is, have it your way. Amen. Because if they just gave me anything they wanted to give me, I might not want that. We always want what we want, but that's not always what we get. Here Israel is, is being broken out of bondage, but God still has to give them some lessons. Just like he has to give to us. Just because you are there doesn't mean you should be satisfied. Just because you are comfortable, you shouldn't get too comfortable. Right. Amen. Amen. Because God can use you to get through to somebody else. Amen. Any questions so far? Let's look at verse 7 again. God said he's the redeemer, but he also says that people despise him. How can you despise God? Here's someone who made everything. My Bible reads that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. And later on in Genesis, it says everything that was made was made by him. But sometimes we get beside ourselves. The creation forgets the creator. And that's part of our human nature. You know, that's why I say God is awesome. Because I know if I was the creator of the universe and my creation got out of hand. Y'all know what we used to do? And I used to play with a toy. It's called an Etch-A-Sketch. Amen. Yes. And, and when that picture didn't look like what I wanted to do, you know what I did? Erased it, shook it. <laughs> and guess what? I had a clean slate. Yeah. Uh -huh. What if God was like that? Mm -hmm. hmm? What if every time we messed up? What if every time that we went left instead of right, that's why I, I, I just so love what God is doing for us. 
that we have to remember who he is. Amen? Brothers and sisters, sometimes we get caught up in the wrong thing. We get caught up in self. Amen? But we have to realize that God is everything that he said he is. Only those who really get to know God understands that God will allow us to do some things. Amen. Every trouble I ever got into in my life, guess what? I did it. <laughs> I might have wanted to blame somebody else, but at the, the end of the day, I did it. Amen. Sometimes we misunderstand that. God, why did you allow me to? No, no, no. God gives us freedom of will. Amen. Amen. I, I give a good example, and, and I'm a little biased on that because of my history. But I think on Sunday morning, there should be more people in Sunday school you say? than actually in church. Why? Because that's an opportunity for people to ask questions. That's an opportunity for people to get their questions answered. You know, on Sunday during worship service, guess what? The pastor don't have time to stop and say, okay, what's your question? That's not how that works. But in church school, you have that opportunity. But so many people don't take advantage of the opportunity. Israel, it was the same way. God had done so much for them, but they wanted more. Amen. You got everything. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, bro. Uh, I just want to go back to what you were saying about it's, it's not always about us. And you were talking about your eye. And I was having a similar situation with my eye about the same time, mm -hmm. having somewhat of a pity party. And you came and told me that you had just had the, the surgery that I was going to have from the same doctor. Mm -hmm. And I see you in your situation, and it kind of helped me through my situation. So I just wanted to tell you that. Thank you for that, because I was struggling a little bit with it. And you said, no, this guy is good. Yes, sir. Uh, just go ahead and have a surgery done, and it worked out good for me. Amen. And, and we have to think about that. People can learn from our situation. Amen. Amen. And why wouldn't I share? If I'm going through something and, and, and I have faith in God, Amen. now I have faith in God. I, I like my doctor. Amen. But I have faith in God. Um, why wouldn't you share good news with folk? Amen. Did you know in 2022 people are still afraid to tell people that they love the Lord? <laughs> Amen. Amen. They, they're afraid when somebody says, you know what? I, I, I got a problem and uh, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't know what to do. Hmm. Well, I know a man named Jesus. Yeah. And all you got to do is talk to him about it. But we'll keep it to ourselves. And you know, some of us Christians, we do that. We keep God like he's our lamp, <laughs> our light. Yeah. And Well, let me go back to my childhood. We used to go to the, the neighborhood store. That was somebody's house. It wasn't Circle K or anything like that. And when you went in, you got your little candies or whatever money you had. When you came out, there was always somebody. Can I have some? Yeah. And you know what you would tell them? Uh-uh. This is mine. <laughs> Amen. And you would hold on it sometimes. I remember I had some nihilators one time, and this sister wanted some of my nihilators, and guess what? I held on to those nihilators and put them in my pocket, and at the end of the day, I went to get one, and they were melted. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't even savor the taste. Amen. That's what we do sometimes with the blessings of God. When God is blessed, you tell somebody. Yeah. Not that you're bragging, but you're just telling. Yeah. Brag is when you give you the credit. But when you give God the credit, that's a testimony. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Pastor Barney, when, when uh, Brother McNair and Sister Phyllis mm -hmm. had their heart transplant, that gave me a testimony. What I see in our church and our praying and our, how they come through it, mm -hmm. I will often tell people about prayer and faith and, and the fact that in our church, two people had heart transplant by mm -hmm. the grace of God and the blessing that God put on them. Mm -hmm. I tell them all the time about those. Their testimony became my testimony. Amen. Amen. And that's another thing that we need to understand from this lesson. In verse 7, when God says he's going to show some folks the kings and princes, 
God does things in our lives and others' lives so that others don't have to do the same thing. Remember when you were little? I, I don't know about you, but I was adventurous. And mama would tell me stuff like, don't put your hand on that stove. It's hot. But you know when I found out it was hot? When I touched it. I should have learned a lesson, but sometimes I went through it myself. I had to learn the hard way. Amen. Some of us, we go through life learning the hard way. If I see that God healed Brother McNair, if I see that God healed Brother Newton, guess what? I ought to be thinking, you know what? If something happens to me, God can heal me too. But sometimes we, 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 we don't see it that way. Sometimes we think we're the only one going through that. But did you know that there's nothing new under the sun? Amen. The date may be different, but the situation is the same. You can read through your Bible and you can find an instance of just about anything. It may not say, well, I heard it on the internet. Amen. But it may say that the crier said or the, the herald said. So there's nothing new under the sun. So why do we keep recreating things like we're the only one going through? Mm -hmm. hmm? I, I've learned some things now that I'm over 50. Amen. Yeah. Getting out of bed isn't the same as it was when you were 20. <laughs> Amen. Used to go to sleep in my 20s, wake up, jump up. I could jump out of bed and rush. Now I got to make sure I can stand up first. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I said, Lord, give me strength. Amen. And I hear everything. Amen. I remember one morning my daughter was trying to get something and I was getting out of bed and she said, Daddy, what's that? That's just my bones, baby. Uh -huh. Amen. But we have to think about that. It happens to everybody. I used to ask seniors sometimes, why do you do this or why do you do that? And they used to give me a saying that I just didn't like. Just keep on living. I need to know the answer. No, you just got to keep on living. <laughs> Why? Because some things you have to get through experience. Amen? Here it talks about Israel being the servant of God, but servants sometimes have to suffer because of who they serve. Amen? And I learned something. When you serve God, there will be suffering attached. Friends that you used to have, they, 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 they don't want to hang with you anymore. Amen. I found out when I went into pastoral ministry that family sometimes. Oh, that's, that's the preacher. We can't, uh-uh. They act different. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, and even when you try to do right. Amen. Mm -hmm. The prophet said it like this. When I desire to do right, evil is always present. Mm -hmm. So if you think every day is going to be a sunny day in this service, it will not. And Israel used to complain when it got dark. And then they used to look for salvation in the wrong places. When Babylon first came, some of the leaders of Israel thought that it would be a good idea to submit to Babylon. We can't fight them, so we might as well join them. They didn't understand that they would become slaves, not part. Sometimes we don't understand that. Sometimes we give in to evil. We give in to things that we know are wrong, thinking that we're going to be in a partnership. But we end up in servitude. Yeah. Amen. Y'all still with me? Yeah. In our lesson, it talks about that, and it talks about how people suffer. In the St. Kofi, it gives an example. There's a sister. She was Methodist Episcopal. Yeah. Amen. And she was a missionary in Africa. Her name was Susan. And Susan, she went to Africa. I believe the country was Angola. Her name was Susan Collins. And in 1900, she started a school for girls. Amen. And she ran that school until she turned 50. And guess what? When she came home for a visit, they told her, you're too old for missionary work. Amen. Yeah. And she could have given the end to that, and she could have uh, given them the satisfaction of you are right. But she says, I may not be in Africa. I'm in Iowa. But I can serve God where I am. Yeah. And guess what? She served God until her death when she turned 89. 
Some of us are waiting for our second act, our redemption. Amen. Don't let this gray hair fool you. God still has use for all of us. Amen. Some of our young people, they worry about getting it wrong, but guess what? Donnie McClurkin had a song that says, we fall down, but we get up. And it says the difference between a saint and a sinner is a saint is just a sinner who fell down but got up. How did they get up? They got up in the Lord. Amen. See, sometimes we don't like adversity. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Brother Monroe, can I use you for a minute? Yes, sir. Brother Monroe manages people. Amen. Amen. And sometimes people don't like management. Amen. Amen. I, I don't know what they think. I think they just think some days they're supposed to show up for a job and they can do what they want to do and they're going to get a check. But if they don't do what management requires, then it will affect their income. Amen. And Brother Monroe's a nice guy. We know that. But as a manager, sometimes you, you just got to, you got to, got to toe the line. Amen. And, and, and Brother Monroe, I'm going to ask you, they ain't putting you on the spot. But is, have there ever been a time when somebody happily accepted punishment or discipline? No. No. Nobody likes that. <laughs> Even when they know they're wrong. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Brother, you fell asleep for three hours today at work. What's wrong? I was tired. Well, so is everybody else at work, but they did the work. So I got to dock you three hours paid. They not tired anymore. Now they want to be mad. <laughs> Amen. Do you know we're the same way when it comes to God's discipline sometimes? Amen. God, I won't, I won't. No, you can't have that. But God, I won't. God said, no. I don't like that, God. <laughs> and then what do we do? We go and try to get it ourselves. Israel did that. God, we want gold and we want a, the best and clothing and artifacts and we want the finer things in life, but we're in the middle of a drought. They were in the middle of a pandemic. And here comes Babylon and they say, you know what? I heard there was green grass, wonderful garden over there. And so they went over there. But when they got over there, Amen. They were just there. They didn't get to enjoy the finer things in life because now you're a servant. You know, some of us have no, no concept of servitude. Praise the Lord. If I had one alt against church folks, amen, is how quiet church folks get when work is to be done. Amen. Y'all will get that on the way home. Amen. As long, uh, I'll just, just share this with you. I'm from around here. As long as the church feeding on a Sunday, the pews will be full. Amen. But if we say, you know what, we're going to clean up the neighborhood on Saturday. It's just the faithful. <laughs> Amen. I, I wish it was different. I, I wish it was, was a different story to tell. But sometimes people don't want to do the work to get the reward. They want the reward first. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. I know I keep going back to my childhood, but I have a lot of good stories from that. Guess what? I always wanted snow cones. Well, in my day, we didn't have a truck with the snow cones. We call them flips. That's when you freeze some Kool-Aid or some sweet water in the refrigerator. And then when you get it in the styrofoam foam cup, you press it and squeeze it, and then you pop it up and flip it. So we called it a flip. They call them freezy cups and everything. But guess what? In my house, you couldn't get the goodies until you did your chores. Uh -huh. Amen. Mm -hmm. And boy, look at here. It seemed like when it's my time to do chores, everything needed to be done. <laughs> Amen. I remember one time my mama had me wipe, wipe, wiping down the wall. And I couldn't understand it. I said, Mama, don't nobody walk on the wall. Seldom do people touch the wall. Why I have to wipe the wall? She said, because the wall needs to be clean. Amen. Did y'all know that sometimes we don't want to do what is required of us? 
because we don't understand why, but we want the reward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God asks us to pray without ceasing, to serve without complaining, yes. to worship him in spirit and in truth, yes. and he will be our redeemer. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we just go up, can we get to the redeeming part? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. One thing I learned about life in my short time on earth, life has no fast forward button. Amen. And the rewind button don't work right. As much as I want to push rewind to the point where I had hair, I can't go get it. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we want what we want. Let's look at our, our lesson again and let's get back there. Sometimes we want things that we should not have. Amen. Our desires get ahead of what God has prepared for us. Has anybody in here wanted to be rich before? Amen. Most of us have. Amen. But the Bible tells us that the poor will always be with us. Everybody can't be rich. Amen. Amen. And nowadays, in 2022, rich is not even enough. Hmm? Jeff Bezos, the chairman of Amazon. Uh -huh. Amen. Do you know he makes more money in an hour than most of us will make in a lifetime? Mm. Amen. Praise the Lord. The average person in a, their working life will make the equivalent of about three to four million dollars over 30 to 40 years. Amen. Most people make less than that. While we've been in Sunday school, Jeff Bezos made 14 million dollars in the, the short time that we were here. Amen. I wouldn't even know what to do with that if I could make 14 million dollars in 45 minutes. Praise the Lord. My wife and I, we were dream talking one day. And I remember when we first got married, she used to say, if you were rich, what would you have? And my first thing I said was a helicopter. <laughs> Amen. It's a good thing to have, but guess what? Somebody got to fly it. <laughs> Amen. I don't have a pilot's license, so that means I got to pay a pilot. And the last time I checked, helicopters don't run on empty. At least I don't want it to. So that means you got to put fuel in it. Amen. And most helicopters now, they take about 100 gallons of fuel. At today's prices, 100 gallons? On something that get me to Orlando and back? Lord have mercy. Amen. I get mad at the gas station when we hit past 50. It's like, Lord, please help. <laughs> Amen. But I also know if I had a helicopter, I wouldn't never be home. Amen. Amen. I'd be popping here, popping there, doing this and doing that. And guess what? I also learned something, too. The laws of physics dictate that what goes up must come down. Amen. Amen. So the more that I'm in that helicopter, the higher the probability is that one day it won't work. Amen. So sometimes we want things, but we're not prepared for that thing. Amen. I remember when I was 19, I had said, Lord, send me a wife. And I learned something from that experience that I need to be more specific. Amen. And God did send me somebody, but that was not the wife for me. Amen. We didn't end up getting married, thank the Lord. Amen. But we had to go through enough trial and tribulation to realize, amen, that you got to love some people enough to leave them. Praise the Lord. But that made room for my wife today. Amen. And I was more specific that time. Lord, please send me the wife for me that you want me to have. Amen. And guess what I had to do? A four-letter word we don't want to do. Wait. Wait. Did you know that's the hardest thing for humans to do? Wait. 
Amen. A lion in the wild only eats every now and then, and most times it's the male lions send the female lions out to gather to pray. But what they'll do, they will wait for hours for the right moment to seize their prey. Some of us won't wait to 12 o'clock to say, where's lunch? Amen. We haven't made any preparation, haven't cleaned any chicken, we haven't done anything, but we're ready to eat. Waiting. Amen. Impatience causes us to miss our redemption. Y'all still with me? Sometimes we forget where God has placed us. God has never designed us to be slaves. That's why slavery as an institution did not last. Because God designed us to have free will. A servant or slave has no free will. It must do, or he or she must do, what the master says to do. As I think about the awesomeness of God, God really wanted to show out when he designed us with free will. Amen. I have three daughters, and they're very strong-willed. Amen. Very strong-willed. But at the end of the day, they at least respect the fact that mama and daddy are in charge of this house. Amen. My, my oldest, she was uh, about five years ago, she didn't like something that we asked her to do. And she said, I can't wait to get my own place. Amen. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now she's preparing. She'll be moving into her first apartment in the fall. Amen. And so she came and sat on the bed, and I was sitting there, and she said, Dad, I need to talk to you. I said, oh, we finna go deep. <laughs> and she said, did you know that furnishing an apartment is expensive? I said, Really? She says, you have all this stuff to think about. Why didn't you tell me? I said, I tried to tell you. Turn that light off. You're running the light bill up. Close the door. You're letting the air out. Sometimes we don't understand at a time, but guess what? As time goes on, we understand. Here, the children of Israel had to gain some understanding. They had to spend time in bondage to understand who God really was. One thing about God, Israel cannot say that they weren't his favorite. Mm -hmm. They can't say that. The Assyrians, they would have victories, but then they would get defeated. Even the Babylonians, Nebuchadnezzar realized that there must be something to this God thing. Because God just really touches these people. Every time I try to get those Israelites to do what I want them to do, they always start talking to God. Wouldn't it be amazing if we were more like that? We realize who our Redeemer was, who our Savior is. And I know I'm preaching to the choir, those of you who are tuned in and those of you who are present. But we should tell one another, God is awesome. He's a redeemer. He's a savior. Everybody still with me? Yeah. God keeps all of his promises. Whatever he promised, he will do. Had a person one time challenge me and says, there is no God. Amen. So I took him to an old example. I asked him a question. Which came first? The chicken or the egg? And they said, the egg, of course. And so I asked him again, where did the egg come from? The first chicken. Where did the first chicken come from? Then they got frustrated and left the conversation. <laughs> Amen. I, 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 I like science, and I encourage all of my students, learn science but realize that science has no foundation without God. People that propose the Big Bang Theory, well, who lit the fire? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
people who say, well, we evolved from apes. Amen. Well, why do we still have apes that don't turn into humans? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Amen. Science can't explain everything. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. I went to the hospital a few years ago. I wasn't feeling well. I was just feeling down, but it was a Sunday. And, and I said, let me go to the emergency room because I just feel low. And I got in there, and they tested me for everything. And guess what? I, I, they said, well, let's test your blood sugar. So the, the nurse came back, and she said, the machine is broken. I got to get another machine. She went and got another machine, and she took my blood and tested my blood sugar. And she said, this machine says they can't get a readable result. Well, we got to send you down to the lab to, to get some blood. And, and guess what? When it came back, my blood sugar was almost 800. And even they were scratching their head. We've never seen that before. I'm laying in the ER. Still ain't got no treatment yet, but then I have a team of doctors come in and looking. And they said, we can't explain that. And then one of them had a book they were flipping through. I said, I can't find it. Amen. But then the head, the chief of emergency came in. And he said, y'all stop scratching your head. There are explanations to just about anything, but some things only God knows. We can do our best, but God has to do the rest. Amen. Amen. They were able to get my blood sugar down, and they didn't understand why this worked and this didn't. But guess what? It was due to God. Amen. As a get ready to wrap up so we can get out of Sunday school, amen, I'm going to ask you one question. I need somebody brave to answer that. Amen. Have you ever suffered because of what you believe? Yes, ma'am. Can you give us an example of that? All right. Somebody hand her a mic. Yes, I do. Um, suffering is what we don't really need. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's real. Real. Yes, ma'am. Okay. We got to have God in order to not to reach this destination. Hmm. Let me tell y'all something. I've been through so much stress, seizures. I was diagnosed with SLS and seizures, and I was supposed to have been out of here. But hmm. God brought me back. Hallelujah. He kept me here for a reason. Yes, ma'am. And God, I want to thank him. And I'll soon be 64 years old, the 24th of this month. Hallelujah. God is a blessing. Yes, ma'am. He woke me up, and I see the mistake that I have made. I, was, I didn't tend to hurt my family. I didn't tend to hurt myself, but only God knows. Mm -hmm. God knows. Amen. That's a powerful statement. As we close, I need everybody to, to repeat this after me. I am. I am. Redeemed. Redeemed. One more time. I am. I am. Redeem. Redeem. And repeat this. God. God. Redeemed me. Redeemed me. God. God. Redeemed me. Redeemed me. Amen. As Amen. we close, let's think about that. We are redeemed, and we are redeemed by God. Amen. Just like Israel was rescued from Babylon, God can rescue us from our situations. Amen. 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 We just thank God for God. Thank you for this time. Amen. And we turn it back over into the hands of our superintendent. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Bonner. Let's give everybody, a, uh, Reverend Bonner, a hand, please. Amen. All right. Now, uh, <coughs> do we have any announcements? No announcements. Just one announcement. Uh, I think the pastor has been announcing about the the, uh, the upcoming graduation program, which will be uh, the fourth Sunday of this month during the regular service. So if you know of graduates who are members of the church, let us know. Um, let, you know, Brother Fred, me, or um, who else is working on uh, Sister Carolyn. Um, so just keep your eyes and ears open. Whoever we have 
next week. I think next week is third Sunday. Whoever we have next week is what we're going to have to go with. So, But if you know of someone out there who may not have uh, gotten in touch, just let us know so we can recognize them on the fourth Sunday. Unity Day program today at 4 o'clock, Unity Day. Come back and join us. Oh, thank you, Brother, brother Monroe. Uh, also, we'll be having our 110th uh, week of prayer service for the Lively Lakeland District, Sons Island also. All right. Uh, <clears throat> what we'll be doing on page 18, we'll be doing our closing prayer. Then we'll have Brother Monroe to give us the Sunday School benediction and... and uh, I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Fletcher if she'll lead us in an uh, inspiration of prayer for the closing. So if no other announcements and everything, oh, one more thing. We still are re collecting our uh, Sunday school collection, still have our Sunday school collection. So uh, Ms. Fletcher is the one that collects the funds. You can either put it in your, uh, your tithe and often envelope, but please don't forget our Sunday school uh, participation in collecting. And all right, please stand as we prepare ourselves for closing, our closing prayer. Heavenly Father, Help me to draw the wisdom and strength I need for the effective living now from your promise of I'll those freedom, freedom and peace in eternity. eternity. Let, let your will, will be done, done and, and let, let it be the guiding principle of our living. living. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let us look to the hill for church school creed and bow our heads for the church school benediction. I believe my but A &B church, church school must grow and grow. I must make, make a top priority to make it so. Every member of Christian, every Christian or worker, every worker trained so that a worker may not be ashamed. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We have come, we have studied, we have learned. So unto our next coming together to study God's word, may his rich blessing reside with you, and may his grace be eternally yours. Amen. Amen. All right. Ms. Fletcher, I'm about to get her.